And moving on to our next uh, uh, part of the inauguration ceremony, we're going to hear from Mr. Swami Swaminathan, who is a governing council member of the Healthcare Federation of India, one of the most renowned and robust association, associations, associations of healthcare in our country. So can we hear from Mr. Swaminathan, please? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, I know I've been told that I have 10 minutes to share my thoughts with you, and I have a lot to say. So let me quickly, uh, you know, sort of dive into uh, the next 10 minutes of uh, sharing with you my perspectives on healthcare. Uh, let me caveat it by saying I am not very old in the healthcare industry. I've spent about three and a half years, so so relatively very new. Yeah? But the reason I moved into healthcare was because of uh, the fact that in my earlier life for about 10, 12 years, you know, I was deeply involved in transforming global corporations in very many different verticals. And uh, some of the, um, the stuff that really uh, challenged me or uh, really concerned me when it came to healthcare in the country was some of these data points. Uh, uh, you know, I'm sure this is all not news to you. These are data points that I've picked up over the last couple of months. Uh, but these were, uh, you know, areas that were really, really uh, disturbing me quite a bit. I know there's a lot of good work that's getting done here. Um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of, uh, um, you know, infrastructure that's been built in, great set of people. But we still seem to be, you know, um, concerned, or we still will seem to have not got our arms around the, you know, some of these areas. I don't want to repeat them. Uh, I'm sure they, uh, some of these data points are already, uh, you know, in your uh, reference. And again, look at this. 30% of rural India has to travel over 30 kilometers to get to a medical treatment. 65% of rural population lack access to preventive medicines. And <laughs> this is mind boggling. Three trillion cumulative healthcare spending is a requirement by 2025, yeah? 75% of population has no health insurance. This is what we spend. Six trillion economic loss due to NCD, six trillion. Two out of three Indians are financially struggling. Healthcare costs are pushing over 50 million people every year below the poverty line. And the gap, yeah? We could be a million here, a million there, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Look at the gap and look at where we are despite all that's going on around us. And this is what troubled me a lot, and that's the reason I said, okay, let me spend the next couple of years trying to see what's the impact that we can possibly make in dealing with some of, obviously we can't solve world hunger, but how can we, you know, sort of uh, try and see what minimal impact can we make? And um, I'm happy that I'm representing Nat Hills today as a governing council member. And I obviously lead an initiative in the Nat Health, which, is, uh, which we have styled. It's a joint collaboration with the Nat Health and NASCOM. Uh, we have actually uh, styled it as Bridging the Health Divide, Leveraging Digital India. I'm sure all of you will uh, hear a lot more about it. It's still work in progress. But some of the background is what I want to sort of share with you quickly today. I honestly felt that this is all about enhancing. I call it, I mean, people refer to GDP as gross domestic product. For me, it's growth differentiation in people, yeah? So on the growth side, I, I mean, with all the stuff that I just talked about in the first couple of slides, I mean, should we really be worrying about growth? You know, I, I continue to, uh, you know, I obviously represent the Manipal group in Nat Health, and I continue to challenge my people. I said, oh, I don't even understand why I am seeing so many advertisements on healthcare on the roads. Because at the end of the day, that's going to be the gap. If that's the gap that we are talking about, so why are we concerned about growth? Honestly speaking, growth is a no-brainer. We can build another 100,000 beds and still be you know, short of uh, things that are going around us. But what's the key? What's going to be the important element to bridge the health divide to make sure that we can provide really health for all, which is really the differentiation and then the people? Let me quickly go to the differentiation. And I, I honestly feel that the differentiation is about providing quality, affordable, and accessible healthcare in a scalable and a sustainable solution. 
You know, uh, a lot of people over the last three years have come and spoken to me, and today I was told that, Swami, can you talk about healthcare innovations? Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, when someone comes and talks to me now in the last two years, saying, Swami, you know, I've got some great idea, I've got this new innovation on healthcare, I say, no, please don't talk to me about new innovations. If you can tell me how you can help me to sort of integrate the existing innovations and actually roll out, you know, solutions in the marketplace, then let's talk. So honestly, you know, when people now come and talk to me about innovation, I switch off. So for the, the thing that we, we are actually trying to deal with in, in NASCOM and NatHealth is trying to see how we are going to integrate innovation in healthcare. And that brings me to this point of collaboration, and this brings me to the po uh, point of pervasive. With all the shortages, because I was in the technology industry for 10, 11 years before I moved into healthcare, I am reasonably clear that if you were to solve that problem big time and actually get somewhere closer to providing health for all, then we have to get into pervasive technology and collaboration. I, I love this. I'll give you a minute to sort of read this. I love this. I think the healing professions are in the midst of a major sea change, a once in a century shift. We are moving from medicine practice as an individual heroism to medicine as a team sport. And that's, I think, is what is required here. Very, very profound. And one of the things I honestly felt what this is what is required in this country. There's so many, I am very delighted that, you know, conferences of this nature, and therefore, whenever anyone calls me and says, Swami, you know, can you share your thoughts? I just drop everything else and I try to be in those conferences because I honestly believe collaboration is going to be key. I have no, uh, you know, problem in my mind. I know for a fact that 200, 300 million people in this country, like including all of us, will have access to extraordinary health care, tremendous health care. You know, we'll, we'll be looked after, we know where to get health care, we will be backed by our corporates, we'll be backed by insurance, we'll have all of it. But the problem is, what about the billion people who don't have that access? And how often do we think about them? Is the real question, ladies and gentlemen. And I like this. And therefore, it's not about individual sport, it's about a team sport here. I think healthcare is about team sport. And, uh, you know, that's why I get very, very, you know, delighted when I see such a large congregation of healthcare professionals in the same location. And this is the, this is the ecosystem of collaboration. You know, whether it's private players, whether it's private public players, whether it is device manufacturers, whether it's equipment manufacturers, we have a whole host of things. But the point is, how, how effectively are we combining our resources, how effectively are we coming together to actually provide healthcare for bottom of the pyramid? When innovate, and my, my problem has been that when people come and talk to me about innovations, innovations by and large, there are exceptions, by and large, has been innovations which panders to the top of the pyramid. And I honestly feel that now innovations really need to address the bottom of the pyramid because then it should not be top of the pyramid and flowing down. It should be innovations, bottom of the pyramid flowing up. Because top of the pyramid will take care, honestly, innovation or no innovation. I mean, this is, this is uh, you know, I can go on and on, but I, uh, I know I'm conscious of time. I think in healthcare, we have to move out from this brick and mortar mindset to a click and mortar mindset. And this is what it is. The world today has 500 petabytes of health data. We have to, we will have over 25,000. Can you imagine the kind of data that's getting generated on born healthcare? And estimates are that in the next 10 years, data sciences will do more for medicine than all biological sciences combined. I mean, every minute we are generating data. Each one of us on a mobile, on our iPads, on our every data, we are creating data. And how often are we using this data to bring smarter solutions in healthcare? It's already arrived, but I'm not so sure how often and how much are we using to, to deliver affordable, accessible, and quality healthcare to the bottom of the pyramid. Technology is galore, and this is the reason I am saying that I am not, if someone comes and talks to me today about innovation, I tell them I switch off. <laughs> this is what we already have. Whether in terms of infrastructure, whether in terms of e applications. And each one of them can be adopted, can be rolled out, can be made available to that bottom end of the pyramid. It just has to come together. 
The challenge for most healthcare professionals today in this country is to actually integrate and collaborate. Yeah, thank you. So let me, let me quickly, I know I've already been flagged, but let me say this. I think the time is just right to push this agenda. Digital India project, you know, we just heard that the Prime Minister is pushing the Digital India government. And that's the reason we have said, you know, the, 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 uh, the program that we are running in Nat Health is uh, branded as uh, Health for All, you know, uh, Bridging the Health Divide, Leveraging Digital India. One lakh crore, I think 20, 30, 40 percent of that money should really be able, should really actually come to healthcare. Because if you don't build an healthy India, I'm positive we are not going to build a wealthy India. No way on earth. Quickly I'll go. I mean, all this is what the government is saying. This is all picked up from the government agenda. And if the government is going to be serious about all this, this plays into what we are trying to say. How can we not be technology oriented in delivering of healthcare? It says, stated focus on healthcare education and digital services is what is going to play into healthcare. And Agencies that are already doing a lot of work. I'm sure you guys have heard. I mean, this is the National Health Informatics platform that's getting designed in this country. When I go and talk to them, their problem is, how are we going to integrate hospitals, providers? How are we going to integrate, uh, you know, uh, private service providers, public providers? And for someone who was involved in rolling out the income tax projects on yeah, you know, the e-returns that all of us file. I was very deeply involved in the project from conceptualization to rollout. The first presentation that we made to the finance ministers, I was a part of the team. And let me tell you, when we actually uh, talked to them about it, I said, one thing that you guys have to do is to make it mandatory. If you don't make it mandatory, it's not going to happen. And today, you know, a lot of people come and tell me, Swami, thankfully you guys did this because today, you know, it's so easy for us to file our returns. Just five years back, people told me it was an impossible task. And we have achieved it. And I just take, and I, I'm sure there are islands of excellence that are around all of us. And I, as I say, islands of excellence exist, but needs integration. Solutions have to, I think when we think of solutions, they have to be fast to implement, scalable, sustainable, cost effective, easy to access. I do not think any industry, it doesn't matter whether it's retail, whether it is manufacturing, or whether it's healthcare or it's insurance, if we don't get our solutions on social media, mobility, I call it the scam. In India, people continue to have you know, bad scam. I said it's a good scam to have social media, cloud, analytics, and mobility. If we don't think of that as a solution, we are finished, we are dead, we are dead. And the goal, I keep telling people, I said, you know, there are great hospitals, I am a part of that. Tertiary care hospitals, bears, private equity, all that stuff is happening in the country, will continue to happen. We we'll laugh all the way to good health, all of us sitting here. But what is it for the bottom end of the pyramid? How often do we think of them? I think the old normal has to become a new normal. The old normal was pushing more people into primary and preventive health care. We have actually switched the pyramid. The primary and preventive health care, two minutes I'll take. Primary and preventive health care is in the pits. Tertiary care is doing well. Secondary care is okay. But we just have to, we have to keep people away from hospital. There's no way on earth that if we continue to push people in the hospital, that we're going to care, you know, we're going to deal with healthcare problem in this country. Change will be constant, guys. I, I, I'm absolutely famous last words, but I'm quite, 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 quite clear. The change will be constant. What we are doing, what we did in healthcare yesterday is not what will be applicable today. What will be applicable today is not going to be what is going to be applicable tomorrow. Enough and more innovations. More innovations will continue to come in. But my challenge and our challenge is, have we taken stock on the inventory of the inventions, innovations that are already available and how have we integrated to roll it out? I think that's a big question for all of you to sort of ponder on. And finally, that was differentiation. Growth no-brainer, differentiation I spoke about, people are going to, if you don't have people, how are you going to do the differentiation? The robotics is not going to do the differentiation. It actually works the reverse. If you don't have people, you can't differentiate. If you don't differentiate, you don't grow. And this is the data point. Shortage of people. So we better get people-centric. 
And I have no qualms in saying that I have worked through different industries. I, and we are a people-related industry. In healthcare, it's all about people. But I know that there's a huge amount of tasks in front of us to actually get people-centric when it comes to people who are engaged in healthcare. I don't think we care about them a lot. I think that's, again, a point that we need to ponder on. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I think I, I, I love this, what J.F. Kennedy said many, 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 many years ago. I think we just cannot get carried away by what was in the past. I think we just cannot, you know, we have to look to the future, not just to be a part of it, but actually to fashion it. And I think to shape it, we know that we have challenges. We know that there are solutions available. I think the big issue is how do we collaborate within all of us? How do we collaborate with the government? How do we collaborate with different stakeholders to actually roll out applications, to actually roll out technology, to actually roll out solutions? so that it impacts the bottom of the pyramid. Because if it impacts the bottom of the pyramid, we are all safe at the top of the pyramid. Let me end by saying, I said this to one of the chief ministers the other day. I said, please understand my personal, I, 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 you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's good to be paranoid. I said, if there's going to be a social revolution in this country, it will not be because of religion, it is not going to be because of food, it's not going to be because of education, because in all this tolerant, intolerant debate, I tell them, Indians, basically we are all tolerant. We'll provide, if a guy comes to me and says, I can't read this, I will help him. If a guy says, where's a mosque or a church, I'll show him. If a guy says, I haven't eaten, I will give him. I'm sure all of you will do that. But if a guy comes and says, I'm sick, what do I do? And I think if we do not provide that health care to that billion people, that could be the inflection point of a solution. I rest my case. Thank you very much.